early December last year, and Marnie Gray is giving her last concert of 2004. A children's entertainer, her energy is infectious. It's the kind of show that makes a five-year-old dance. Are you ready to groove? We're gonna have a good time, so start to move. So listen up, friends. And back on this day a year ago, Marnie herself is in a particularly good mood. Two days later, and she and her husband will be taking off for Thailand. This was actually we, when we arrived. Yeah, the 13th that was our 14th. first hotel. Yeah, it was in Bangkok. Thailand, a place they had never been, a Christmas vacation they had been looking forward to for months. Oh, this is Chiang Mai. Chiang Mai was beautiful. For almost two weeks, the Vancouver couple traveled the country. Then, arriving on December 24th on a small island called Koh Lanta, it was there that their lives would change forever. And I said, look at the water. And he's like, oh, cool, do you want to go take a look? So yeah, and it looked, didn't look threatening because people were laughing and running back and forth. So we, you know, we thought it was something maybe that was OK. <laughs> you know, so. to, to look at, yeah. all these fish were popping out of the water. As you know, we got closer, we saw these little tiny silver fish popping out of the water. Mm -hmm. So, uh, And some bigger ones, too, because the Thai people were, were picking these fish up and collecting them because it was, you know, they were going to cook okay. them. Moments later, and the couple would find themselves in the middle of the biggest natural disaster in recent history. I just yelled, run, because I could tell how, how fast this was coming in. A couple Marnie and Kevin had met on Koh Lanta later sent them this home video of the first wave hitting their island. Two more waves would follow. For Marnie and Kevin standing on the beach at the time, it was, they say, like being in a horror movie. And at that point, the ocean lifted, and then it carried me, and it threw me, you know, into these fence railings here. Kevin was behind me trying to pull the, the furniture off. Her husband was eventually able to free her. First they swam, then they ran. All of these photos were sent from a, a, a family that we met um, on the hill. We, we were running with them. And their son happened to be up on the third floor of the hotel, and he took this photo of us. The third wave hadn't hit yet, but along with most others on this small island, Marnie and Kevin, although injured and traumatized, began heading for the jungle up above. And the water was so strong, we had, you know, Velcro Tiva-like shoes on, sucked them right off our feet. So here we were running barefoot. And that was the most dangerous part, was the debris, because, you know, that stuff, it's moving so quickly and it all has sharp edges because it's been ripped or torn. And then I just remember getting halfway up, and for me at this point, it's such a, it's this odd feeling that goes over you when you, you've just survived something. So for him, it was hurry, hurry, hurry. He's behind me, he's pushing me. He's yeah. like, Marnie, Marnie. And I'm like, oh, I think there's angels in this jungle. You know, <laughs> I, I was just, look at these people. Aren't they beautiful? And I, I was just in this sort of, you know, I think scared. But also I've just gone, I've just, I've survived.